the JSTARS platform, a modified 707 to carry a ton of different onboard systems, pretty much became the AWACS for ground targets, with an ability to pick up moving armoured columns to low flying helicopters, and could rally this info back to ground control which would guide Air Force strike packages to the targets. This is a story of Desert Storm's E-8A JSTARS. The Joint Stars united the US Army and US Air Force into one program, after both groups were developing very similar platforms with very similar goals. Congress ordered them to work together as one joint program office. JSTARS' role would be to provide a long-range, almost all-weather, day and night intelligence platform. The system used by JSTARS would combine an advanced radar, computer and communications technologies, creating a surveillance, targeting and battle management system platform. The JSTARS platform would be based upon used 707 airframes and were extensively modified to meet military specifications by the chief contractor Northrop Grumman. The first two prototypes would cost $657 million. JSTARS had an extremely good radar known as the Pave Mover and was located in the canoe on the bottom of the fuselage. This radar could locate thousands of fixed and mobile targets in an area larger than 20,000 kilometers from a standoff distance from up to 250 kilometers away. The Pave Mover had several modes it could use, but here are three of the most common. Firstly, wide area surveillance, which would be used to identify slow moving targets such as convoys and powerful signal processors, and when used in pulse Doppler mode, would show short signals and could distinguish wheeled vehicles from tracked armor. High resolution synthetic aperture mode would be used to locate fixed targets by producing a map of the ground regions with a similar accuracy as those found by recce photos. Key features in the terrain could be seen, such as airports, bridges and buildings. The high capacity of JSTAR's datalink would beam the radar's info back down to the ground station modules, which were truck-borne receiving stations, which would process raw data and serve as the JSTAR's link to command and control. These receiving stations could also tell US Air Force pilots where the enemy ground targets were, or Army artillerymen on where to fire their artillery. The guys crewing the EA-8s would be both from the US Army and Air Force, and although they had the same data, the different operators manipulated the data differently. For example, Army operators looked for changes throughout time to predict enemy movements, and the Air Force operators looked for immediate targeting data for strike aircraft to destroy. US Center of Command for Desert Storm had requested that the Joint Stars would be ready for operational in theater before January 17, 1991, when Desert Shield turned into Desert Storm. So, after several months of accelerated work, final testing began. In September 1990, JSTARS easily completed a successful operational fielding demo in Europe and located three convoys consisting of 25 vehicles at each at night time. After this, the program systems managers aboard the JSTARS briefed the findings to the US CENTCOM in the Gulf, and they requested the deployment of the E-8A Joint Stars to the Gulf by January 15, 1991. They now only had a few months to standardize the equipment, train personnel and develop a general layout for operations. On January 12, 1991, JSTARS Operational Detachment 1, consisting of two prototype JSTARS left for Riyadh, and along this 17-hour flight, the crews were still preparing the finalized version of the two heavily modified X707s. Their first test mission would be on January 14, 1991, in order for the engineers to get a feel on how useful the aircraft would be in the desert setting and troubleshoot other errors before the war kicked off. The aircraft got airborne and downlinked its radar to the ground stations, and they were receiving the radar's raw data. Soon after their checks were complete, the test flight soon became an eight-hour intelligence gathering mission, where the aircraft flew the first successful JSTARS mission in the Gulf. From that night onwards, one of the pair of JSTARS would be flying a 10 to 12 hour long orbit every night. The F-15Es and other Air Force strike aircraft wanted to see the JSTARS info in order to get some guidance to some action. One of the opening nights, one of the operators on the JSTAR figured out that they could see Frog and SAMs with chemical munitions and warheads, and got an F-16 to drop cluster bombs on the convoy of dangerous Iraqi weapons. An instance of the JSTAR's ability to give the all clear for operations was when an F-16 pilot allegedly ejected after being hit, and the JSTAR saw no Iraqi forces moving into the crash site, allowing for a safe search and rescue mission. 
The army were also helped when artillerymen from the 7th Corps, who were using MLRS, were given the coordinates to an Iraqi SA-8 SAM emplacement, which was soon destroyed by the artillery. When the ground war kicked off, JSTARS provided coverage of the Kuwaiti theater of operations. On January 29th in the battle for Kafchi, the JSTARS platform was used to identify locations of Iraqi troops, telling commanders if Iraqi reinforcements were coming. This also allowed JSTARS to assure ground commanders with certainty that their current engagement were not part of a much larger battle, and they could focus more on the current main battle. Iraqi efforts to resupply their troops at night time in vehicle convoys were picked up by JSTARS and targeted by ground attackers, with at least 70% being destroyed. The Gulf War came to an end on February 28, 1991, where the pair of JSTARS flew 49 sorties with a combined total of 534 hours from 14th of February to 6th of March 1991. Even though being scheduled to enter operational service in 1997, the two JSTARS prototypes made it to the Gulf six years ahead. Nowadays, the improved EHCs are being phased out. However, a replacement is still yet to be uncovered. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to become part of our growing aviation community, why not pop into our Discord server? Thank you for watching and have a nice day.